Hello, this is my health and wellness video and today I'm going to be talking about vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D, you know the sunshine vitamin, all you need really is a bit of sunshine and you don't get short of it. That's more or less true. I could almost finish at this point but not quite. And like so many things there's a story behind all this. Imagine me one Sunday morning, at maybe early in the morning, because I tend to get up early, maybe six o'clock in the morning, and I'm sitting there, and I'm reading a medical journal. How boring, you might say. Well, yes, it very often is, I've got to say that. But this morning was different. The morning was in July 2007, and I was reading a major review on vitamin D deficiency, which looked pretty boring to me. It was by a chap called Michael Hollick, a professor of medicine in Harvard University. And he started off by saying that, more or less, I'm, my own words really, did you realize that in the world one billion people, that's right, one billion, suffer from vitamin D deficiency? Okay, I thought to myself, so what really? I mean, who's suffering? <laughs> But then it goes on to say a little bit more about vitamin D deficiency and what it actually does to you. And I suppose I wondered, I mean this is my story, how I read the article, what happened to me, and what impact it's made on how I practice medicine. And I suspect it probably will affect the way I practice for the rest of my life, I think. Perhaps the biggest breakthrough of all is that in the last 10 years, we now understand that it's not just bone cells that get deficient in vitamin D, but it's any cells, practically. Nearly all the cells in the body, one way or another, have vitamin D receptors, and this was something we really didn't know about before. And because they do have vitamin D receptors, anyone who's short of vitamin D, inevitably, is going to suffer from consequences according to which system seems to be most sensitive to that deficiency. Why should we be so concerned now anyway, and how is it that the number of people who suffer from this seems, if anything, to be on the rise rather than falling? I think there are a whole range of reasons here. People spend a lot of time in front of their computers and you don't get a lot of sunshine there. Then again, I think it's true to say that people's dietary habits have changed. They've changed partly because everyone's very frightened of coronary disease and strokes and blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, and obesity. And for all those reasons, people try at any rate to avoid dairy produce. Dairy produce is normally one of the richest sources of vitamin D. So avoiding it is really very much of a two-edged sword. Maybe it's good for your cholesterol level, but it's certainly not good for your vitamin D level. And I'm sure that that's contributed quite a lot. Then again, we're all very scared of exposing ourselves too much to the sun for fear we might get some sort of skin cancer, particularly malignant melanoma, which is a real killer. And lots and lots of people do get skin cancer. So in a way, it's understandable. So what do we do? We wrap our children up in all sorts of sun-protective gear. I know some of my grandchildren who live in America, they're so dressed up when they go out to swim there's barely a part of their skin that's exposed at all. And as if that's not good enough, the mother puts on uh, factor 20 or factor 50 sun cream so that the skin doesn't really meet the sun at all. And adults put up a sunshine umbrella, they walk around the streets with a little sunshine umbrella over their heads, heaven forbid they should get sun on their face, maybe it's going to cause wrinkles. Maybe it's going to cause skin cancer. Whatever it is, they don't want to know, particularly the wrinkles. But it does mean that people are avoiding the one thing that could be preventing vitamin D deficiency and the one thing that could be supplying them with enough vitamin D. And then again, I think probably as people get older, their skin to some extent loses the capacity to produce vitamin D from the sun effect on the skin. And I suspect also that they probably suffer to some degree 
from being less good at absorbing vitamin D from their food. There's a strong link between vitamin D deficiency and the risk of hypertension, type 2 diabetes, probably caused by autoimmunity, um, heart attacks, strokes. Well, that's an awful lot of disease. Vascular disease of one sort or another, strokes, heart attacks, peripheral vascular disease, hypertension, hypertensive heart failure, all of those things added together come to something like 50% of all deaths in the UK. It's a very large number of deaths. Well, I was sitting there in my kitchen, as you might imagine, and I was really sort of going, wow, that's incredible. I actually went back and reread some of the uh, chapters or some of the paragraphs because I just couldn't believe that I'd really read it right. However, it seems that I had, and as I went on, it got worse. The wow factor was sustained through the whole article, and I then moved on to things like, uh, I mentioned the autoimmune system, how extraordinary. Black people, for example, because they have so much pigment in their skin, don't produce as much vitamin D when they're in the sun, and they're therefore much more prone to vitamin D deficiency than other people are. And it's also known, particularly in America, that black people seem to be much more prone to tuberculosis, and why should that be? And if they do get TB, they're much more difficult to treat, and they're much more likely to die from the TB. Now, that's dreadful. I mean, those are really awful things. Could it be that vitamin D deficiency is playing a considerable part in this? Well, apparently there are very many people who are much more famous than me who really think that's the case. So that's extraordinary. And then what about cancer? I mean, aren't we all frightened of that? I certainly am. I've had it. <laughs> I know what it's like. I'm very frightened of getting it again. But at any rate, all common cancers or practically all common cancers, it seems, are very much more likely to occur in people who are vitamin D deficient. I mean, there's some extraordinary facts. I mean, I'll just list a few of the cancers. Colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, um, and of course malignant melanomas, which I think I probably had me mentioned before. Now, the funny, strange thing at any rate, not funny, nothing's amusing about a malignant melanoma, but the strange thing about it is that if you do have a malignant melanoma, if you're unlucky enough to have one, and if you're vitamin D deficient, you're much more likely to get recurrence, and you're much more likely to die from it than if you have adequate supplies of vitamin D. Now, that's surprising. You'd think that if you'd had a melanoma, you'd keep miles away from the sun. It would actually be quite the wrong thing to do. Muscles, bones, and your brain all have vitamin D receptors. That means to say that if you're short of vitamin D, you're much more likely to get aching, painful muscles. Possibly you'll get diagnosed as suffering from fibromyalgia. You're more likely to suffer from fatigue. You may feel depressed. Um, all of these conditions are very much linked to vitamin D deficiency. What the article didn't say is what happens if you correct it. Are we saying that if you have vitamin D supplements or if one way or another you do correct it, do you actually make people better? If people who are depressed have low vitamin D levels, do they really feel better when you improve their vitamin D levels?